Tonight on the House of Tiny Tearaways. Do you know there's cameras in the bedroom? I said Rumpy Pumpy's out the window, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. Oh. Alarm bells are ringing. Right. Ah! Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Because <laughs> all he wants out of me is sex, and that's it. It's back, it's new. Yes, the House of Tiny Tearaways is ready to open its doors once again. There's a brand new house, two brand new psychologists and lots of families all needing help with some major problems. So, are the parents driving the kids mad or the kids driving the parents mad? It's time to find out. What? Shut the out. You've heard to me. When relationships are at breaking point. I love my little girl so much. And sometimes I really hate her dad. Young families are on the edge. Out now! Now! Lie down! Sleep! Mum, I'm not getting bust around no more! And the kids are out of control. <laughs> Stop fighting! <laughs> Stupid. This is where they come, the house of tiny tearaways. Two of the country's leading child psychologists, Laverne Antrobus and Elizabeth Kilby, are on hand to provide intensive therapy for these young parents. To do this, they'll be able to watch up to 24 hours a day by remote cameras and those hidden behind mirrors. To really understand why children act up, I'm going to have to look at the whole family system. There might be some uncomfortable truths ahead. I don't want you to hate me. You can go away about it. Paul, don't go just yet. I'm getting angry. <laughs> Living here means the parents and their kids can behave as normally as possible, free from distractions. There is no telly. If these families are committed to making progress, they've got to be prepared to listen to us. No, I just want to go home. Go then, walk away, little boy. Shut up. Walk away. All the young parents coming into the house over this month-long TV event are hoping that Laverne and Elizabeth can make a real difference to their lives. But whether they can remains to be seen. What a bunch of weirdos. Brand new House of Tiny Tearaways, two new child psychologists. How do you feel about it? Nervous or excited? Nervous and excited, with both of us here. And I just think this is going to be a challenge for the two of us. OK. Well, let's look at our first family, the Butters. This young mum was pregnant with triplets at 17 and is now finding them impossible to handle. We've got three devil children, a newborn and one on the way. I don't know how we're going to cope. Meet 21-year-old Sammy Addison and her partner, 28-year-old David Butters, from Cleveland. They have these four children, three-year-old triplets, Lily Sue, Taylor Jean and Lewis, and four-month-old baby go. Alfie. No, when me and Sammy first met, I don't know, it was just... It, for me, it was just casual, you know what I mean? I didn't expect nothing long-term. After just four months of being together, the couple had the massive shock of discovering Sammy was pregnant with triplets. I was pleased that I fell pregnant the first time round. I was devastated. Absolutely devastated. And despite her early optimism, the reality wasn't easy for Sammy. I was diagnosed with postnatal depression when the kids were three or four months old. Oh, come on, Hi. babe. <laughs> I look at other people with just one child and I wish I could be like that. With the triplets, I wish, I wish they'd behave. Or I wish I could take them out for walks, but I can't. Even with David giving up his job as a painter decorator to help out at home full time, leaving the house is a well, nightmare with the triplets in tow. When we go shopping for clothes and stuff, they run, just run off in different directions and you don't know who to go for. And you, I just feel like crying. It can't be normal behaviour, you know what I mean? What we're going through. And you, you can hear them ripping the wallpaper off and then you'll come in, there'll be just bits of paper all over the tube and spat out. Despite being potty trained, the triplets keep using their beds as a toilet instead. You've weed on the bed, haven't you? Another nighttime ritual is rearranging their rooms. They've pulled all the beds out. Lewis is crying. They've took the quilts over the, the gates. This daily battle with the triplets is becoming impossible for Sammy and David to handle. And now there's another surprise on the way. I found out two weeks ago that I was pregnant and it wasn't planned and it was a really big shock. And a couple of days later, I cried because I don't know how we're going to call. When I found out she said she was pregnant, I was absolutely devastated. Lately, these last couple of weeks, it's been where I've just wanted to pack my bags and go. If David left me, I wouldn't be able to call. He said he'd take the triplets with him and I'd have Alfie. Sounds awful, but I couldn't call. I couldn't do it. There's some days I've sold out of the hater because of like I'm stuck in the house all the time. It's... 
sorry. Oh, it's, it's really hard. It is. Oh my God. Holy moly. I need to dissect this. First up, triplets hard for anyone. So hard for this young couple, right? Yeah. And also, as David said, the dad, he said, for me it was just casual. Yeah. Guess what, sweetheart? It's a wake up, isn't it? That's yeah. such a wake up call from both of them. I mean, I feel so overwhelmed watching that. And then she's pregnant. Yeah. Hold on. I mean, you want to go. Really? How did that happen? And not only that, she was sort of laughing. Is this a woman who wants lots of babies? This is a woman who's really just sort of living day by day and trying to survive. And she's really in denial about how bad the situation is now and how it potentially could get worse. And that's, that's the worry yeah. in the work that we have to do because we have to stop her from just staying in this, this state. And for me, the other part of the work is dad actually it's almost like they've gone to opposite positions mum's in denial it's all going to be great and yeah. dad is actually drowning in in the stress and the worry but what's first thing that you want to do we're going to get in there quite quickly yes. together because we need to show them that two people can work together yep. that, and, um, and that actually we're going to have to sort of carve them up a little bit i think they are so overwhelmed and stressed that they've forgotten to see what the world is like for three year old triplets and actually what I want to say to them is their behaviour is like this for a reason, they're telling you something and actually let's focus in on these kids because they are crying out for you guys to set some limits, to set some boundaries and to sort them out. As the House of Tiny Terraways yeah. opens its doors to the very first family, Elizabeth and Laverne are watching. They'll spend a day observing before they can intervene but their first challenge is to remember which child is which. The easy one is baby Alfie. Then there's the not-so-easy three-year-old triplets, Lewis, the only boy, and the identical girls, Taylor Jean and Lily Sue. Lily Sue is the one in the pink cardigan. I'm very impressed about how they're holding hands, they're very together, but they're with Dad. I mean, this is quite striking. Ooh, it's pink. <laughs> oh, my God, there's covers everywhere. Right? Look at it, look at it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Shake the delicate colours out. Yeah. It's a major have to... headache. <laughs> I'm getting this no, sense with mum no, that actually no, mum no, mum no, is no, presenting no, with no, the kind of enthusiasm no, 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 and desire no, 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 to see all that the children no, have got. No, and, and I'm no, thinking, are you an adult? No, are you no, one of the kids? No, Dad is really standing out for me as the adult in this dynamic. Whereas no, mum is a bit no, excited, excited, no, I want to no, see no, it all. No, we know that, don't we? You know that he said, I'm the one that feels like I'm parenting everybody in this house. There is your pants are falling down. Look, put your pants up, put your pants up. Right, steady. Again, we've got Dad with the triplets. Mm. Yes. But what's really worrying is, is Sammy and her lack yes, of absolutely. wanting to be in there and be the mum. Chocolate. I think I'd be getting fat while I'm in here. Oh, yes. Wouldn't you, wouldn't oh, you? we've gone upstairs. Yeah. Oh, there's a plant, Sammy, we've got to water. And oh, no, there's one as well. That's loads. I've never had a plant. But Mum's green fingers are the least of her problems, as it's sticky fingers that Laverne and Elizabeth are keeping their eyes on. They put this big shiny bowl of sweets in the house to test whether the parents can set limits for their children. So what will happen when they spot it? All right. Go to the door at the back. Oh, then we'll go check upstairs. <gasps> oh, yes. oh, straight, straight into the scene. <laughs> and then Sammy and David join in the feast. Oh, just chuck one back in. I don't want to go home. Down this way, let's have a look. All right, just be very careful up these stairs. Dad in with the be careful. Dad in with the comments. You know, Dad's the one who's, who's got his mind on safety. Oh, wow. Get in, wow. Oh, my God. Take a look at this. My bed. No, this is your bed. That's their beds. In terms of what we're seeing with Dad, in, in terms of how hands-on he is, and we know this is a dad who's given up his work to look after these guys. And that says something about his commitment to the children, but it also speaks volumes about how Sammy can't cope yeah. with them. And for me, this is where we're starting today. You know, why is this dad so hands-on and why, why can't Mum cope with these children? The Butters family have finished their tour of the house, and after putting baby Alfie down for a nap, Mum Sammy isn't comfortable with being separated from the youngest member of her brood for long. I might go get him. I'll go get him. Never when we're going to put him to sleep. I had a million pounds, I'd get like ten nannies. Let's just hear that one again. 
If I had a million pounds, I'd get like 10 nannies. <laughs> that was lazy. The butters have been in the house for almost two hours. Elizabeth and Laverne decide that they've seen enough for now and go in to meet the clan. Hello. Hi, we've come out to meet you. Is it all right if we go in and have a chat in the yeah. house? Yeah. yeah. Go on. Are you, oh, you going to come, come in? in? Can we get some of them sweets? We need to talk about those sweets. <laughs> oh, we're just as bad. We keep pinching them all. We have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, the sweet swiping was spotted, but for now it's the more heavyweight stuff that needs tackling. So, first family in. How are you feeling? All right, not too bad. I was scared on the way off. Oh, I thought I was going to pass out. But once I got in, I was excited because it's so bright. It just, it makes you happy. <laughs> so, tell us, have you two spoken about what it is you want? Together. Yeah, we want, yeah. want thingy, don't we? Something to go to bed on night time. Yeah, and not have to have a battle bed. with them. We want to be able to just relax on a night time. Yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on these guys. Yeah. Let you have a talk. But that's, that's our main thing. If, if we can get into, into a routine mm -hmm. on a night time, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And with a tea, get yeah. them to actually eat some From tea. From tea time onwards. Yeah. Some nights they're really awful. It's, yeah. it's really bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, some nights I really do lose my rag and I just have to walk out of the room. So, right. I, I, so that's something that we need to pay some yeah. attention to. Does that worry you that David can snap? She does, Sometimes, you've told me, yeah. my temper's getting, like, getting worse and if, worse If and I hear him really shouting, I go in and I give the kids cuddles because I don't like to get scared. I mean, and the it's funny because in it's... your family is overwhelming. It is. I mean, I, I really, you know, I do sympathise <laughs> because yeah. I think it's a huge number and, and I know that, you know, the shock probably <laughs> yeah. of being pregnant <clears throat> and then suddenly finding out you're expecting three yeah, children. Yeah. yeah. See, I just wouldn't be classed as a normal family. Yeah, That's what... we'd say we've never been normal. We go down the town, we're like, we're, where we live, we're famous where we live. Yeah, can't everyone do, knows. You can't head Not always, so. though. It's because of the kids. We can't it's do nothing normal, normal, and I just want to be that normal family. That's what I wanted. I wanted one, I'm not saying I just wanted one kid all along, but I wanted one child, and I wanted to go and do all these things that I had planned. And then three came along, and I was like, because that Alfie was planned, this one wasn't. Yeah, it was a pure we've, Alfie's so spoiled. Oh God! Is he? What yeah. Do you mean? In what way? We've ruined him because he sleeps, with the triplets. Last night he slept in our bed. And did so. you not feel like that with the triplets? No. No. I don't know. It's very night strange. <laughs> so you've got this one little sort of extra special baby that's getting all of your attention. Yeah. yeah. And you, sort of, you know that you're doing things already with him. Yeah. They're a bit spoiling. Yeah. Mm. But you can't stop yourselves. No. Mm. Sometimes I shut off. Sometimes I regret having them. Mm. If we just had Lewis, it'd be so easy. Mm. But I suppose the thing, you know, that I can't allow you to think is if we yes, only had. Yeah. yeah. Because you've yeah. come into We've the house got, today, yeah. you've got triplets, you've got a baby, yeah. you've got another See, baby. That's... We mustn't get overwhelmed by that, but we've got to deal with the reality, yeah. haven't we? Mm. So today is really our watching day yeah. to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so just be yourselves and yeah. let's see what happens. I mean, we haven't had very much um, behaviour from the kids, so I don't mm. know if you know there are certain things that would trigger them off. Obviously, I'm very interested in, in your limit setting Sweet. for them with the sweets. We have a limit. Yeah. We just let them... Exactly, yes. It's hard because they're there. You can't stop them. But that's your job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, let me return you to your kids. <laughs> It's 12.15. Elizabeth and Laverne leave the butters to start their lunch. Oh but as God, soon as they've gone, there's a swoop on the sweets. And again, Mommy. Sammy's joining in with the kids rather than stopping them. Huh? She's even making sweetie swiping into a game. <laughs> I'm so kidding. I'm so Get your cleaning stuff under there. Tear the right, go sit down, please. Sit down, please. Come on. Lunch doesn't get off to a great start. No. No. Surprise, surprise, after all those sweets, Taylor, Lily and Lewis aren't hungry, so they don't really see the point in sitting at the table. Sit and eat your dinner and you can have your baby back. Eat. Now. No. Lewis, don't copy me. Eat. No. Sit and eat your dinner or you're going to bed. I thought I'd had some kitchen wrong there, like Sammy. No, that's yours. No, that's yours. David! I'm tired. What do you think you're doing? Sammy, you're right. Bed now. Get to bed. Get to bed. You're not funny. Oh, you can start now then. I'm going to bed with Alfie. No, I don't think so. 
Elizabeth and Laverne have been watching the stresses of lunchtime closely. And what I've really seen and what I was really struck by, if this is a meal time where people sit down and eat, the noise, the shouting, mum and dad coming and going, I mean, it was just all over the place. And when things felt like it was getting a bit out of control, there was quite a lot of ha handling, a lot of hands-on, a lot of dragging and pulling, which just upped the ante and made things even more chaotic than it needed to be. But this has got to stop. These children need to respond to these parents' instructions. Calm, spoken instructions, not being yelled at. The volume is up here and I want it down here. She just feels and looks so overwhelmed the whole yes. time. Yes. And then there's this massive opt-out clause for oh, her, isn't there? Goodness. Because if David comes anywhere into view, it's over to you. Yeah. And I'm beginning to hear Sammy say, I'm tired, I want to sit down, I've had enough. And I'm beginning to think, you know, what is this afternoon going to hold for us if Sammy's tired already? All the trees and everything. Are you a tree free? It's, it's, it's a clue, doesn't it? Like... As the Butters family have a rare moment of peace in the garden, it's time to meet the next lot. This couple were just 16 when they had baby Lacey. And now, when they could be out having a good time, they're changing the kids instead, which is putting a real strain on their relationship. 17-year-old Becca Hobbs-Green and 17-year-old Paul Lovell are parents to 11-month-old Lacey, whose surprise arrival left them completely unprepared. Becca is currently living on her own with Lacey at a mother and baby unit, while student Paul still lives at home with his dad. I was actually the average teenager, drinking, going out, parties. Before having Lacey, I always used to do was just hang on my mates. Uh, get drunk. I'd done three tests and I didn't I didn't truly think I was pregnant but obviously they said I was so I went from there really and I rang Paul and I told him and I was like what what do we do? He's like I don't know. <laughs> Although Paul tries to help when Becca stays over, their lives have been thrown into disarray by baby Lacey's lively nighttime behaviour. Lacey goes to sleep earliest at ten o'clock at night um till probably latest half eleven. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Mummy said bed. I think it's quite obsessive the way she's waking up. It's just more more than anything, it's overwhelming. We always argue who's gonna get up for her and who's gonna deal with her and because she does get up so much it gets tiring, I'm sick of doing it. So I asked Paul to do it. But the thing is, say if he wakes up I, I wake up anyway. As Becca's the one who spends most of the time with Lacey, she feels she's the one who's literally been left holding the baby. It's like, well, I've got a 24-7, you haven't. You can escape and go home and sit on your bum, read a paper, watch telly, um, play the PlayStation, the Wii, whatever you want to do. He can do it. I feel I'm, I feel I'm doing enough, but it seems to her that I'm never doing enough for her. She always wants more. I feel a lot of the time like his mother more than a girlfriend. I, I know I am the one wearing the trousers, in a sense. I can't cope with her as well as him. It's like having two children. Lacey's arrival has changed this teen couple's relationship in more ways than one. To do with our sex life, now, I don't know, it sort of just went after giving birth to Lacey. Becca's got no sex drive. I'm always up for it and she's never up for it. In my eyes, she's always on my brain and she comes first, so if that means going without, then that's the way it's going to be. When Becca was three months pregnant, she and Paul split because of the pressure, but they've decided to give their relationship one last shot. Our relationship was good when we were 15, 16, it was... And then since we had Lacey, when we are just borders between 16 and 17, it started to go really bad. The way I see it is we both went into this parenting 50-50, so we should do things 50-50, that's how I see it. It would be nice to make a go of it, yeah. Right, well, that's children having children, isn't it? Does that mean for me to say it? She's a baby, she's 17, he is 17. He looks so young to me, like he wouldn't be even be able to, you know, reach up a counter to get a, you know, he shouldn't be making a hot cup of tea, basically. He has this baby. They've said it's make or break. Is this going to split this up, split them up? I think it's really fascinating, isn't it? Because, you know, that, to all intents and purposes, that's what you see. You see this young boy. But actually, he's a young boy who's a father. Yeah. He's got to take on his responsibility, and they've got to decide how they can do that, together 
or apart. For me, there have been big alarm bells with the relationship between these two because I'm getting a really different vibe off mum and dad, both in their approach to parenting Lacey, yeah. but in their approach to each other. And what's coming through is that dad is very dissatisfied with where the relationship is. He feels like he's not getting he, attention. He's a baby! And mum feels like she's not getting the support that she yeah. needs with Lacey. These guys are... <laughs> like this at the moment, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> They're miles apart. They, they talked about their sex life. I mean, so, I mean, I, I shouldn't laugh, but he's 17, he's like, I'm always up for it. This is really? <laughs> she's quite sweet, and she thinks it's sort of a choice between him and the baby, it seems, rather than she can love them both. Having a child changes your life so profoundly that all aspects of your life change, including your sex life. And for me, this is about how do we, how do we help them make that transition from what you were before, which was teenagers, to what you are now, which is parents. But he has a real opportunity here, doesn't he? Because actually, this is his opportunity to say, OK, I'm going to step up to the mark. I'm going to be the dad. Once he does that, I think then she will be able to think yeah. about how they come together as a couple. She can't think about that at the moment because she's stuck with baby Lacey and she feels like his mum. I'm going to take this case. Are you? Yeah. Are because you? <laughs> okay. I want this case. I want Go this on, case. Then. And I want to really challenge Becca's expectations of him if they're far too in excess of what he can actually do. Is she a mum that lets him in? And I want to challenge him because he's saying, I think I'm doing enough. We're going to see. Garden spectacle. I know, oh it's really nice. The child psychologists have just been told that last night Becca and Paul had a massive row and almost split up. Paul nearly dropped out from doing the show. Things are still frosty between the pair, so who knows what will happen when they come into the house. Well, this couple have come in today having nearly split up last night. I mean, that's quite incredible, isn't it? The night before you're coming into the house, yeah. well, I'm not doing? coming, it's over. It's not, it's not the ideal start, is it? We're talking about families coming together and thinking about their relationship oh, and their parenting, really and we know these guys are seriously on the rocks. Hello. Hiya. Hiya. Oh my God, it's nerve wracking. <laughs> Paul hasn't put his bag down. Hello. He's not sure if he's staying. Oh, yeah. What's your name? So my name's Lacey. Oh, oh, it's got girls' names. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Sue. No! Right. Shut up. Shut up, yo. Taylor Jean <laughs> and Lewis. No! Oh. Shut up. <laughs> I seem to say they're very cheeky. Oh. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll start it. <laughs> Just felt like the most ordinary interaction, didn't it? This is such and such. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> look at the kitchen, look. <gasps> <laughs> Parents, limit sweets as you wish. <gasps> they shouldn't be there. Look at the high chairs. Have you checked the suite out yet? I know. Yeah, we right, just took one. I was like, it shouldn't be there. <laughs> oh, oh, don't. We'll, we'll all go on like big. We've all go on like big heifers, won't we? <laughs> be massive. I think Becca's got a really strong sense of rules and how things ought to be, and I think this is going to really challenge her in a lot of ways. Right. Okay. We're going to go have a mooch upstairs. These are so heavy. Yeah. God. <laughs> Hello, guys. It's lovely. It's definitely <laughs> Becca in charge with Paul following, isn't it? I think this, this, this need for order, having everything where it should be, is about managing her own worry and anxiety, really. And it's going to be interesting to see how Becca copes when oh, really put yes. under strain. Oh, look how yellow this is. Paul, look. <sighs> Upstairs, oh, Becca nice quickly video. clocks something that gets her worried. Where's the bed? Where's the cot? At home, Lacey's cot is right next Ooh. to Becca's bed. Hmm. Um, Paul? What? She's in her own room. <laughs> She's gonna go ape. She's not gonna like this door being closed either. Be quiet. Is that her or you, Becca? It. It's clever, like. Are you dead? They're closing their window on an eighth time. <laughs> she just fell out the bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, idiot. In the butter suite, the three year old triplets are adapting to their new beds and Mum Sammy really likes hers. Oh, oh, David, I think we should have our bedroom like this at home. She's done a poo in the potty, Sammy. In the potty? She's done a poo in the potty. You're going to have to get off your bum and sort it. Oh, my bum's got cramped. Mm. <laughs> hey, this will be a first for you. Why did you shut up? <laughs> stinks. Where is it? Oh, it does stink. Ugh. Oh. <coughs> Thank God I don't have morning sickness. <laughs> you have to look after him because he's your baby brother. You're the big brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
comfy. Oh, these are comfy. Yeah. yeah. I get you. I get you. I really get you. Mm. Let's talk about how you think these two families are going to get on. It's a lot of children. There's the four Butters children, and then there's little Lacey with the two couples. Now, what's so interesting, Paul seems more like Sammy to me. Quite relaxed, they'd like to have a sit down. And the quite tense Becca feels like she might get on with David. And, and we know, don't we, about Sammy, that she, she does watch what, what happens in other people's lives. And I think this is a real opportunity for her to see a mum who gets on and does. Yeah. Oh. But also, it's an opportunity for Becca to see it the other way, with somebody who's a little bit more relaxed. And, you know, the scales might just be, you know, moved around a little bit, because that's how you learn. You learn from what you see around you. And it might be interesting for Paul, who, Mr. Yeah. I do loads of parenting, to watch Damon, who will be up with the kids doing blah, 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 making lunch, making four lunch, you know, all of that. Okay. David and Paul might not be the same in their approach to parenting. Don't break it. But like most boys, they love their toys. And Becca and Sammy have also got a special something in common. She's, she's argue lords. Sorry? <coughs> she's argue lords. Yeah, we do like cat and dog. You wait for we it. Do. You just wait. If anything like us, I'd, yeah, that's what you love. You'll have to love it. The poor bleep machine, it'll be rough, won't it? Bleep, bleep, bleep. For all their differences and similarities, they seem to be getting along like a house on fire. And another thing they've all got in common is their love of sweets. <laughs> the sweets. <laughs> Elizabeth and Laverne left the sweet bowl in the house to help them gauge just how the parents cope with giving their children boundaries. But with 17-year-old Paul in charge of the bowl, it's now the parents that are lacking any self-control. We are with Louis, you get, get out. Louis, <laughs> 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 you check his way for me before eating. <laughs> Bring him over here. You'll see him puking up there. Put them up on the side, <laughs> children. <laughs> oh, is that fudge? Yeah, I know, I just noticed oh, it. I got it. Get Oh, it tastes like fizzy and we're going to be so bored. <laughs> and if their parents are doing it, then why would the kids hold back? <laughs> Do you want to be for the kids and sweets? Oh, cheeky. Oh, mm, my good. Hey, oh, cheeky. As it's observation day today, Elizabeth and Laverne are meant to just watch, but with everyone at the sweets, Laverne just can't bear it any longer and decides to intervene. Mm. Becca and Paul, yeah. I've come in, I can't bear it anymore. I'm going to take my away from you. I can't actually believe what I'm seeing. I'll give it right to six of all of them, all on the sweets will be gone. No, I'm They're taking well. them with me. I can't take them. Can you want to take them with me? Me and a couple. What was that sign? What was that sign? Side, but it is difficult. Right, okay. Well, I'm taking them with me. Yeah, it's very, diffi on, very difficult to know <laughs> who are the parents and who are the kids in this room at the moment. Yeah, they're not eating yeah, anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Becca and Paul wanted to have a chat with you. Mm -hmm. Laverne's concerned about Becca and Paul's bust up last night and takes them off to the consultation room to find out just what's going on. What? Bring them back. We get the sweets back. Oh. Somewhere else. Them out and leave a couple. Do we get Can the sweets back? You? No. <laughs> I'll take them with me then. <laughs> you had quite a wobble before coming in. Okay. Last night. And you weren't sure about coming into the house? It was yeah. last night, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Because that's pretty key to what we're going to be able to do in the house if, you're, if that's how you're feeling. Basically, I didn't want to give, have sex with them. Mm hmm. That's why we argued. And then I gave in in the end because <laughs> that's the point with arguing. What do you think when Becca says that to you? Uh, yeah, she's, no, no. We were arguing in a way. Okay, what are you was... arguing about? I think with the stress of Lacey last night as well, she was going absolutely ape off on one. Yeah. What do you? What, I mean, what are your aims? What do you want us to help you with? I want to be able to have a relationship with Paul, whether it includes sex or not. Okay. Be able to sit down and have a conversation and be nice to each other. Mm -hmm. And talk to each other like human beings, not drag up the past and talk to each other like dirt. Mm -hmm. Which so there's something about respect. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So Paul, what do you want? To achieve Lacey getting better and right. So mm -hmm. me and Becca could spend more time working a relationship. Okay. Sure. All right. Because I'm always grumpy as well, and I yeah. feel like I can't be bothered mm -hmm. to spend time with on the relationship because I'm tired. And I just think it's she's so the most important thing in my life at the moment. But what yeah. about being together, even sort of cuddling and... I just don't know, I just don't want it. No? I'm just really dreadful, like, I don't know. I don't know why, I really don't know why, but I just don't think 
Do you love Paul? I don't know. I love him for giving me my baby, obviously, but but this is what I mean. If there's only sex there, which he even on my behalf isn't there anymore, mm -hmm. what is there? You see what I mean? There isn't anything. But that's quite a big admission, yeah. even, even now, today, yeah. saying, well, I'm not sure. I want to I have sex with you and it means something. Not me, you just have to do it just to keep you happy. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Why don't you take her back to the house yeah. and I'll carry on talking to Cora and then we'll come in. Okay. As Lacey gets restless, it's a perfect opportunity for Becca to escape a few home truths, leaving Paul in the spotlight. Well, I'm guessing that must have felt a little bit difficult to hear. Yeah. She's saying, you know, I can't even answer that question at the moment as to whether or not I love Paul. What were you thinking? Well, I've heard that for quite a long time. She's been saying that to me. Right. So I'm, it makes me angry. Sometimes I'm a bit upset. But... Are you finished in there now? Huh? No, I'm not. I'm meant to be going back, but I don't sit here. <laughs> no, it's just because it's about our mine and Paul's relationship, and it's <laughs> back to us here. Basically, I just feel like. Me and him aren't working, it's all based on sex. And I have lost my sex drive totally and utterly ever since time. No, I don't have one. I don't know if I'll pregnant me, I'll tell you. <laughs> so you love her very much. Yeah. And you want to be with her. But you're frustrated at the yeah. moment with how she wants you to be around her. Yeah, and just things when she argues, she'll just get quite angry sometimes. Well, OK. So. And you want to just leave at those times. So yeah. would you say that one of the things we've got to work on is how you two communicate with each other? Yeah. Yeah? And that you can actually talk to each other in a way that is a bit more respectful. Because that was the word that I heard from Becca, that actually what she's looking for is a little bit more respect from you. If you had to choose one word, what would you say you were looking for from her? Probably the same as well. Sometimes yeah. she's just not respectful to me either. OK, so a bit of respect. Yeah. Well, we are going to focus on Lacey. Of course we are, yeah. because you've said, you know, one of the key things would be her sleeping at night. Are you going to be watching her tonight? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which will mean that if she can sleep at night, then you two can think about your relationship together. I am worried, though, because what we might be able to do is get Lacey to bed. But not the other one, yeah. But we might not be able to get the other bit working, unless you two can really start talking to each other. 28-year-old David Butters and his pregnant partner, 21-year-old Sammy, have come to the house with three-year-old triplets, Lily Sue, Taylor Jean and Lewis, and their four-month-old baby, Alfie, in a desperate bid to take control of their kids' unruly behaviour before the next one comes along. I just feel like crying. <sighs> 17-year-olds, Becca and Paul, have come into the house with 11-month-old daughter Lacey, who is making their nights a living hell. On top of that, they very nearly didn't come into the house after a blazing row last night. I want to have a relationship with Paul, whether it includes sex or not. Today, the couples are being monitored by psychologists Elizabeth Kilby and Laverne Antrobus before they start the tough job of attempting to fix the kids' behaviour and repair the adults' relationship. Still to come, more tearaway antics and tears, and not just from the kids. It sort of pounce on me. A dog. If they do not begin a conversation tonight, part of me feels that I can't help them. I couldn't leave them. I'd, I'd have them just have to call. The two couples have been in the house for less than half a day, but one thing's already clear. They don't half moan. I'm freezing. I think this is just completely <laughs> weird. I don't know how to use it. I so didn't get enough food. Oh, at least she didn't have to wear a microphone. These freaking morning about theirs. I'm devastated it there isn't a hoover. I'm just hitting them out. Oh, everything's too chatproof. Oh, this Excuse is me. so annoying. Sick of the moaning, Elizabeth wastes no time in confronting the adults to remind them why they are here. Just a little thing that I wanted to pick up on with you guys is just kind of want to think about what it is we're here to do. And the focus is to come in, to do some work, to think about your children and their behaviour. Mm. Now, I appreciate this environment isn't what you're used to, <laughs> but what I'm hearing is a lot of things aren't right. What I want to see you guys doing is showing me how you manage and cope in this environment, OK? Because this is here and this is about how you guys do some work, yeah. OK? <laughs> so, 
This afternoon, I want to see some difference. Okay, I want to see a different attitude, and I want to see you interacting and showing me how you can sort these kids out. Yeah? That's what I'm seeing that in this bit. I think that, that was our first telling off. It's half past three and Elizabeth has set up an activity for the Butters. The family have to work together to decorate a Wendy house so that Elizabeth and Laverne can assess how they operate as a family. I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. Ex-painter decorator David is the first to get stuck in. Are you, are you rolling it on? That is showing off, David. No, just not. be it. Just... Yeah, but just, it doesn't matter. I'm trying, I'm trying so to help you. So you just want it perfect. No, yes, you do. I'm trying to help him do it, Sammy. Well, the word perfect, I think when Sammy uses it, conjures up images of perfect parent, perfect mother, and we've talked again and again about not being sucked in to feeling that David is the perfect father. I mean, it must be quite difficult for her to see the way in which he interacts with the kids. He's so lovely with them, and it looks perfect. Yeah. But we know it's not, because it's not the whole story. It's a church now, Sammy. The church? Have a look. I'm going to put a nightclub sign on, like, Name it. Oh, is that on your face? Yeah. <laughs> Here, watch. Okay, okay. <laughs> I get Dad's nose. Get Dad's nose. <gasps> Sammy. Oh, no, this yeah. isn't a That's paint enough. fight. See, this is why I don't like oh, doing no. things, David. <laughs> this is why I don't like doing things, because it all might get a bit out of control. Not bit funny. Of Shut up. Oh, look what he's doing. He's writing their names on the wall. Oh, what about Alfie? I'm going to do Alfie now down the side. You always forget about him. No, no, that's what I'm doing now. As the house is reaching its full glory, the triplets are, understandably, proud of their new home. Having mum and dad's full attention focused on playing with them means they're behaving like little angels for once. Look, Mummy! No! Mummy! Taylor, you are top-notch doll. You are absolutely brilliant. One of the kids said, look, Mummy, look, and Mummy didn't Mommy. respond. And it was Daddy that responded. Yes. It's that that we yeah, need to talk to him about, yes. because he's you got to let her brilliant. find a way in. Yes. I'm sure that part of her sort of idea about not wanting them, not being part of it, is feeling sometimes that she misses that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, Lewis, Lou, come on, I'll save you there now, so we've got enough there. We've oh got enough. Just, oh no. <laughs> We thought Sammy would really stay back mm -hmm. and do nothing, and actually what she's done is become another child. Mm -hmm. She is thoroughly enjoying herself out there, and yet she's still using David to do all of the disciplining and the getting and the fetching and the carrying. It's a level of involvement that doesn't really bring them together as a family. No. Still keeps her quite isolated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to roll your head. <gasps> How much have I got on my head? <laughs> Earlier today, Elizabeth told all of the parents off for behaving like children and not adults. 17-year-old Paul has now ditched the toy robot and moved on to more challenging things. So what, what computer things have you got? A Wii and a what? An Xbox 360? No, I've got all of them. Have you got a PlayStation eight. 3 as well? Oh, yeah, my brother's got it. What games do you play like? I think I was quite good. Seven and a half, so. And what? Shooting oh, any of them? What types of games? Yeah, what type of games? Like shooting and RPGs and stuff like that. Yeah. I've only got like <coughs> three, but the rest of my brother's got loads. Yeah. Do you know there's cameras in the bedroom? I know. <laughs> I don't like it. We've already discussed like, this ah. one. I said rumpy punkies out the window, innit? There'll be none of that time. They've even got microphones coming down near your bed. Steady. It's half past four. Steady. While the Butters kids seem to have found a novel use for the toy bins, Elizabeth has asked to see Sammy on her own. But being called in without David is beginning to worry her. But why aren't you getting called to talk to them? Why me? I am not. I probably will later on. Maybe they think you've got some issues. And you have them. I know you have. It's always me. Okay. Yeah, but I haven't come okay. here to, like, okay. come to sort the kids out. Yeah, but maybe we need sorting out something in the proceed and getting them sorted out. Maybe it's something to do with us. I've said that to you. Still worried as to why she's been singled out, Sammy heads for the consultation room. When you guys were together four months yeah. before you first fell pregnant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, having kids is a strain on any relationship. Yeah. But that quick into a new yeah. relationship, I mean, that's a huge... And then 
triplets. Yeah. Was David as excited as you in the beginning? Not first, no. But then when he found it was triplets, he was, you know, he was, he was quite annoying actually. Because <laughs> he used to make me eat all the right foods and, do you know, we had a pregnancy book and it was, oh God, he used to read more than me. Because something I've learned about watching you and David so far today is, you know, David's initial reaction was, oh my God, there's the panic. But then there's something very practical about him. Now you, I think you're quite different to David in this respect, <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You kind of, you get excited about things, but you don't worry as much as he does. He's very good at that. <laughs> Do you think that's something about David being the kind of dad of the whole family? You know, he's got to hide his emotions, he's got yeah. to deal with his things. Yeah, because I just, I just sit and cry. <laughs> he won't do that. And when David's upset, who takes care of him? No one. <laughs> I, I, it's, do you know, I'm not very sympathetic. <laughs> I'm not, I just, I don't know why. Come on, you know, if that's what you think about yourself, that you're yeah. not sympathetic and you're not kind yeah. to your partner. Do you know, I must, do you know, my mum used to say I have a split personality. That I've always been like it. I can be really nice one minute and really nasty the next. Even David knows that. The switch. Yeah, I switch, so, do you know, lots of times. I've got a hint of this today as I've watched you with the kids, because <laughs> you're calm, you're calm, you're calm, and then rah, the <laughs> shout comes, yeah? And something I've seen today is, sometimes I'm watching you and I can't tell if you're the mum <coughs> or if you're one of the triplets. <laughs> yeah? Does that make sense? <coughs> yeah. I just, I want my kids to have a good time and I want them to, I want to be the friend as well, yeah. not just the mum. I think that is a very dangerous game to yeah, play. Yeah, I know. Yeah? <laughs> because, Sammy, when you're their friend, friends don't tell them what to do. Yeah. And friends aren't in charge of them. So yeah. when you then want to be authoritative with them and tell them what they've got to do, they don't listen to you. Yeah. And I've seen it enough times in this house today. Yeah. You tell them, you tell them, you tell them, and then you say, David! Tell the kids. <laughs> David! I'm tired. Oh, you can start them out then. I'm going to bed with Alfie. I yeah. do that all the and time. And he comes, did it. And why do they listen to him and they don't listen to you? I don't know. It's not like... Uh, you do know? I do know. Why don't they listen because to you? Because I'm not acting like the mum. Because you're not yeah. acting like the mum. I mean, I've watched David today and I think it would be really tempting to fall into this trap of going, David's doing a great <coughs> job. Sammy's not in there. Yeah. But I've watched him with those kids today and I've watched you looking at him and there's this look on your face that says, I wish I could do that. Really? Oh my God, I didn't... Yeah. There's a bit of you that I think wants to have the kind of control yeah. that David oh, has. Oh, I, I do want to have control over him like David. I get a bit jealous sometimes because I listen to him and I'm like, I'm just wasting my time. I just try and try and try and I don't know how to overcome that and have control over him. I don't know what to do. That is, I think you've, you've, you've really hit something there for me, yeah. Zoe, that it, you can get jealous of what David has. Yeah. And actually what, what being here this week is about is about you finding your position in this family mm -hmm. and being the mum. Yeah. I want to show you something. Oh, do I have to watch myself? Oh, God. We found out two weeks ago that I was pregnant and it wasn't planned and it was a really big shock. And a couple of days later I cried because I don't know how we're going to cope. When I found out she said she was pregnant, I was absolutely devastated. Lately, these last couple of weeks, it's been where I've just wanted to pack my bags and go. If David left me, I wouldn't be able to call. He said he'd take the triplets with him and I'd have Alfie. Sounds awful, but I couldn't call. I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> what about that clip is upsetting for you? Just, when I said I'd I just have Alfie and I wouldn't have the triplet. OK, I don't think you believe that. No? But I don't think it's helping you to say it. Because if you say it and I've heard it, then yeah. I think the triplets may have heard it. And actually, this is about you being their mum. Yeah. While Sammy's in with Elizabeth, really David hasn't escaped to talking to either. Laverne has asked him into the quiet room to talk about the couple's habit of pulling the kids around like they're bringing in the weekly groceries. No, you'll sit and eat your dinner. Tell you what, you're not going outside to play. There's a lot of pulling, yeah. and I was just getting a bit worried about small limbs. Yeah. Yeah, and I noticed it with Alfie. Sometimes yeah, you pick him up, you pick up by his arms. Yeah. And I'm like this. Oh. Alarm bells were ringing just because I think you've got into that yeah. way of doing it. Yeah, but actually, should. like this, you run very big risks yeah, of, just, of just pulling 
yeah. putting a bit too much and yeah. maybe not realising. Uh -huh. So, I don't know, if you could Dad. just, yeah, for yeah, my peace yeah, of mind, yeah, no problems. go under here for me. Yeah. That would really make me me settle down a little bit. So, <laughs> okay. just, I think that's just what you've got into, haven't you? I think yeah, that they yeah, go yeah. off in different directions yeah. and you're like this. I've got an so, I'll pink yeah. one, Dad. i will pink one? Yep. Two minutes, I'll get you a pink one. With her consultation over and Sammy still in one piece, it looks like she didn't really need to worry about going it alone. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, Dawn, I'm all right. That was sad. I sound so common. Goodbye. No, I do. Oh, God, this is going to be hard. You know what's so interesting when you watch Sammy? Is she reminds me of like six formers. She's only 20. I know that sounds ridiculous, but when I watch her like that, she's 21 and she suddenly, it's like she's just woke up. Oh, I have four kids. Sammy's really struggling to make sense of what it means to be a mum and, and to be in charge and actually wanting to be their friends so that they love her. Mm. I think this wanting to, to get down on their level is about her bonding and connecting with these triplets. And she would say to me that she didn't feel she bonded with them. So she's desperately trying to make friends with them, to make a link with them, but that's at the expense of her being their mum. It is quite a common problem where you want, you want your child to like you. So you want to be, uh, you know, trusted and you want to be in their circle and you want to be their advisor, not necessarily their mate, but it's, it's a far cry from old fashioned, I'm your mother, you don't have to like me, but this is how it works. So I imagine lots of people stumble into these problems. Actually, mothers are incredibly important central figures in children's lives and they have to take on multiple roles. Mm. At times, it's fine to be your kid's friend mm. and to play with them and to share a joke with them and just to have that lovely connection. But you also have to be able to act in their best interest, make decisions for them and tell them what to do. And that's the juggling act of being a mum, being able to hold all of those roles. And Sammy can do some of them, but she can't do others. Despite baby Lacey not sleeping at night, Becca's decided to put her down for a late afternoon nap, leaving Dad Paul to his own devices. We gotta get up, girl. After two hours and six minutes in bed, they eventually get up. Yeah, come on. Come here, this way. No. <laughs> it's now only a couple of hours till Lacey's bedtime, so it should be fun Morning. getting her to sleep tonight. Oh. Morning, gorgeous. While oh, Paul's all alone downstairs, promise. it's all systems go in the lounge, promise. where Sam is yeah. having a rest and David's playing with the kids as okay. usual. <laughs> <laughs> having seen Becca blow hot and cold around Paul, Laverne wants to try and find out what she wants from the relationship. Mm -hmm. I want there to be something between us. I want that little sparkle back again, that little thing where I can go for him, go to him for a cuddle and know that he's not going to grope me and then mm -hmm. want sex at the end of it. And I'm just predictable. Like, yeah. Do you think Paul realises how bad you feel? No, I think he just thinks I'm absolutely demented that I don't want sex because I'm like the, probably the only girl on the planet. Mm -hmm. But I just don't have a drive for it anymore. Okay. Otherwise, I've purely said to him, I said, you know, at the end of the day, I don't need you, I can do this without you if you don't understand. Mm -hmm. That's just it. Mm -hmm. It's all about sex to him. Where's the more emotional Becca? <laughs> I don't really know. Long gone. Long gone? Years ago. So that's yeah. very worrying. Yeah. Okay. I'm just sick of being upset. OK. What, what, have we, what have we hit on there? What have we touched on? What's happened? Let me know. Because that seemed to be a shock even to you then. Mm. Get your tissue. I just don't think I can be there for Paul anymore. No. Not in the way that he wants me to be. <laughs> Said all along now, I'd rather do this on my own. Because all he wants out of me is sex, and that's it. But let's let's just put that to one side for a minute, because we know what the the demand is. But it's about having a demand placed on you, isn't it? Yeah. And what's that? It takes advantage of my emotions. Mm -hmm. When I'm down, 
or upset. Mm -hmm. He knows how to work it, so he'll talk down to me like dirt. OK, so you have to present quite hard a hard-faced cow. Right. That's what I have to be. Oh. And when you show him a softer side? Don't want to, this is the thing. Because he'll pounce on me. Like a dog. Was... You've suddenly gone very... shut yeah. off from me again, so... I just can't be bothered with him anymore, personally. <sighs> it's just easier, him being there for her. Mm -hmm. Not me. Right. Blackmail. Pure blackmail. If I don't be with him, he doesn't see her. OK. And that's your worst nightmare? Yeah. Cos I never saw my dad. Never. I don't want that for her. Right. This is a thing. I want some stability for her. But... Stability at an absolutely huge cost to you. Yeah. That's not going to work, is it? Nope. No. Blissfully unaware of what's going on around her, Lacey is playing with the butters. Are you looking after her? Are you looking after Lacey? Can you say Lacey? Say Lacey. Well done. As Paul goes into the consultation room to join Becca, will they be able to confront each other about the problems facing their relationship? Can you tell him, Becca? It's like last night, as soon as I sit down on the bed, you would like to smother me and it really annoys me. I would give you cuddles and that ball, but you always try and get to something else. And you know I don't want it. <laughs> I just do it to shut you up every time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Paul, you're not a, a talker, but I need to hear something from you. I think Becca needs to hear something from you. It makes me angry because that's not true all the time. It makes you angry? Just, that's just what she's saying. It's exactly true all the time. Or someone else from the club or kiss or something, she always thinks I'm leaving into that. OK, so there's... A communication but from you sometimes, which is just about having a kiss and a cuddle. Yeah. How would Becca know that that was the case? I don't know how she would know. Because you've got to find a way, haven't you? If this relationship is going to continue, you've got to find a way of helping Becca to understand that you are not putting her, because I think she feels put into a position where she has to make a split decision and a choice. And if she doesn't make the right choice, then this relationship gets really rocky. Is that right? Yeah. The pieces of this jigsaw puzzle go, to be go together quite neatly for me. It's not a surprise to me that Lacey doesn't sleep at night. Mm. It serves a very good function in this relationship. Doesn't it? Mm. Her not going to sleep <laughs> means that you two don't have a space to go to bed together mm. in order for you to have sex. I mean, it's... And until you two can resolve that part of your relationship and be much clearer about what you want from each other, Lacey's sleeping isn't going to be fixed because I think, you know, parents can quite unconsciously create a situation that stops them from going where they don't want to go. And for Becca, it's so important that she has some control over her, herself, her body, and whether or not she wants to have sex with you, consciously or unconsciously, She's making sure that Lacey doesn't go to sleep. While Paul and Becca take a moment to reflect on their consultation, Elizabeth and Laverne put their heads together to try and make sense of their troubled relationship. For me, Becca was kind of giving with one hand and taking yeah. away with the other. There was contradictions in what she was saying. This, but this, mm. all the time. It's died a long time ago, but now I want this from him. Yeah. And she, she, she really opened up and at one point she just sort of melted in and cuddled him and he could barely look at her. The arm went round but he was not looking at her and there was still nothing. Mm. This boy is so shut off with his emotions. But that's the place to go next. I mean, I, 
I feel slightly anxious about it because I know that I need to speak to him on his own. I need yes. to talk to him about his story. Yeah. But I'm just so worried that yeah. he's not going to say anything. He's not going to open up. Yeah. And then, in a way, I'm going to be left feeling how Becca does. Well, for, there's something about the withholding here, isn't there? What each of them's holding back mm. from each other. Becca's holding back the sex. He's holding back everything else. All the emotion, mm. all the communication, all the connection. And in the middle of this is a relationship in chaos and a small baby that almost felt like it was being the token passed backwards and forwards between these two. If they do not begin a conversation tonight, then, you know, part of me feels that I can't help them. I do miss the big bear hug. Poor old Becca. So she was just looking for a cuddle and Paul was probably thinking he was going to get something else. It has been a full-on first day at the House of Tiny Tearaways. Join me tomorrow to see how everyone copes with bedtime and the arrival of a new family. We don't have a relationship. We just both live in the same house. It me doing my nerves. <laughs> it's my favorite. Babe, no!